guys this is Tina welcome back to my channel so we're here for another one of our mass making um, sessions and what I thought we could do today is make some yo-yos I think I said last time that we would do something with fabric today we might do something with fabric um, next week as well actually because I was kind of torn between um, what to do today but I thought what with all what's going on around us and you know everything that's going on it would be really nice to come and do some really you know fun and fab colors and you know colorful stuff I always think yo-yos are a bit of a sort of happy looking <laughs> looking thing um, and this is a way to just bring out some really pretty colored fabrics and you know do something really fun and nice to just escape from everything that's going on around us so if you're planning on playing along what you're going to need is obviously a variety of fabrics um, you're going to need some thread. Now I have threaded some of my needles ready to spare you that and I must try not to get them now knotted up because that will be just really irritating. Um, more for you guys than me I'm sure but <laughs> um, yeah so you're going to need obviously thread, needles, um, your fabrics, some scissors and some buttons if that's how you wish to finish your yo-yos off. Um, obviously if you don't need to finish them off or don't wish to finish them off with buttons then of course you don't need to include buttons uh, I think that's all we're going to need but obviously you know things may arise during the course of the um, video so yeah let's um, crack on and and get started so I've brought along a whole bunch of just different size fabrics um, <sighs> I probably should have actually got the iron out and ironed them but ugh, I just don't really do ironing except for when I do my coffee dyeing on my paper which ironically I then iron all of it so uh, yeah I don't really um don't iron any any clothes but oh yep obviously coffee dyed paper that kind of takes priority so uh, that does all get get ironed so what you're going to do I mean of course, most people have probably made the yo-yo flowers before. Oops, I'd obviously been planning on using this for something else and I've drawn on the back of that. Um, yes, you've probably all made yo-yos before, so I hope that I'm not just, you know, waffling on and being sort of really patronising. But for those people who haven't, what you're going to need to do is cut out a circle. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. You know, just a rough circle. And then you're going to take your thread now I am no sewer seamstress you know any of those things pretty rubbish now what I do and I am not saying that this is the correct method this is how I do mine um, but as I you know as I say I am definitely not claiming to be an expert I am definitely not claiming that this is the right way to do these but it's the way that I find works okay for me, um, you know, but you may find that you have a better method that works better for you. I like to just go around, I think what I'm using here is a running stitch. Again, I might be using the wrong terminology, but I think this is a running stitch. And then you can just kind of go back and forth through the fabric, like bunching it up like this pretty close to the edge but I mean don't get too worried if you're you know a few millimeters away again I mean I would normally bring this closer to my face to be fair but obviously I'm trying to keep my head out of the camera so it's not the best <laughs> it's not the best which is why I generally avoid doing things like this actually in videos because um it's always slightly slightly difficult when you're doing things you know that you would normally do close up and you're trying to then do them from a distance right now once you've got your little piece and you've sewn all around the edge and as you can see I mean that literally takes seconds you make it then I or what I like to do is poke my finger in and make it like <laughs> resembling like a shower cap um, like that now I just do that so that I get a bit of sort of um, you know the shape if you see what I mean and then you can just pull your your threads like that and again then you can just arrange it pulling them as tight or or not as you wish 
obviously your center you know i like to use buttons but there's no reason you couldn't use other things i mean sometimes i use them with nothing in the center i have to say it just depends on the project now again i am not saying this is correct i normally go through mine to the back i don't know whether that's how other people finish theirs that's what i do so I pull mine through to the back. If I were going to have that plain now, I would just then knot that off there. And again, I am not saying that this is right. You know, lots of people I think just would stitch back and forth a couple of times and, you know, trust that that would hold. And I'm sure it would. I'm not, you know, I'm not meaning that that wouldn't hold. But for me, I like to just, just knot it off a few times and then I feel a bit more confident that that's going to hold. Because obviously if these are just going to be sat in your stash, you know, you want your your stitches to be, be held in there. So, I mean, that's just a little plain one, which is super cute. Really, really cute. So if we just do another one now, but a, you know, one with a button. And again, obviously these can be all different sizes. I mean, I tend to make them slightly on the smaller side, I will be honest. But there's no reason, you know, why you couldn't make them larger. It will depend very much on the size of your scraps. I might come back to this because obviously it is very screwed up. So I've got another piece here. To be fair, it's, it's pretty screwed up also, which is not great. But if I just cut that down, so I'll just cut it, you know, sort of in half like that and then like that okay and then you can just cut round again just something resembling a circle now again if my fabric was ironed and flat <laughs> I could probably have folded this over and then just cut like a a semicircle and I'm sure that lots of people will suggest that in the comments, um, which, you know, that would be a fab method. I obviously couldn't really do that because my fabric was pretty scrumpled up and screwed up. But you could have done that. Now, actually, I've just had a second thought because I'm going to put a button in this. I'm not going to use this orangey coloured fabric. I'm going to use this here. Oh, I'm already can see that my threads are getting a bit tangled up to the side right so we're going to go round the edges again exactly the same way and I mean as you can see this is you know this is a slightly bigger one that we're doing here please excuse the state of my hands I um We've actually got lovely sunshine here at the moment um, and actually it's quite warm if you can be out of the wind and you know get into the sunshine it's actually quite a warm nice temperature comfortable comfortable temperature um, you know still kind of jumper cardigan type weather but but it's very 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 pleasant so why well, I was in the garden at the weekend and um, I thought I would make the most of the sunshine and did quite a bit of coffee dyeing. So my hands now are not looking great. And the other thing that I also did was I did quite a bit of gardening. <laughs> and if you watch my channel a lot, I'm sure you can imagine my gardening methods, they're very much similar to my crafting methods in that before I know it, I'm digging around in the mud, you know, with like no gloves, no trowel, no nothing. So just, you know, my hands, they're just in there, in the mud. So, I mean, this was like the first time out in the garden since the winter. So there was lots of, you know, pulling up weeds and clearing leaves and all that type of stuff. And of course, rather than use the correct tools, I just, you know, get my hands and, you know, get, get stuck in there. So... Yeah, I've got mud now and, you know, obviously I have scrubbed my hands, but um, I have a lot of, well, they're very rough now, to be honest, which is uh, not that great. But yeah, coffee dye and, and garden, garden effects on them. Right, so that one, as you can see, I mean, how cute does that look? 
I just really, really, really love that. So again, I like to just go through the back before I even stitch a button on. That's just, you know, personal choice. I'm not saying that's the right way to do it. So I brought along my, my vintage button bag. So we'll just tip some out here. And let's just see if we can find one that's going to look pretty against this fabric. This would look awesome, but look at the size of that button. That's just going to be like very weird, isn't it? Because it's covering up basically the whole, basically the whole thing. So let's just have another look. Oh, I might have to get another handful out. Before I know it, the whole desk's going to be smothered in buttons. Oh, I've got... I mean, that's quite sweet, isn't it? I have to say it's not as nice as that blue one, but, you know. We'll just pop that one there. So... Just going to stitch that in. And of course, what you could also do, if you didn't want to finish them off at the moment, what you could do is obviously just finish them off like we did the first one, i.e., you know, empty with no button. And then when you come to use it, you could just actually glue, glue a button onto your, you know, in the centre. And that's another way that you could then help to tie it in with whatever project it is that you're working with. Okay, nearly done. There we go. And they're so cute, aren't they? And I just thought, do you know what? It feels really nice. It's warming up. It's, um, you know, obviously strange times at the moment and scary times, to be honest. So I thought, let's just do something fun and pretty, colourful, you know, something a bit different. So... There's the second one. Right, I will leave the buttons obviously there. So again, doing our, you know, usual, um, more like an assembly line method, what I'm going to do, I think, is just cut a whole bunch of circles out. And then I can obviously I mean, this one, I'm very torn between do I try and get rid of most of the flowers and then it's got a much more just black and white thing going on. Oops, and as my fabric just gets smaller and smaller and smaller, will there even be enough to actually make one from? Probably not. Okay, so we just cut out a whole bunch of circles. So I really hope that you guys are all doing well. I hope you're all staying safe and, um, you know, that the situation is not causing you too much anxiety or anything like that. It is a very scary situation, to be honest. I mean, you know, I don't want to dwell on it too much because maybe, you know, this is not really the place that people want to be then having our crafting dragged down by what's going on. But having said that, you just can't ignore what's going on. You know, you can't do anything and not mention it because that would just seem completely, how can you not mention it? So yeah, I mean, I just pray that you're all staying safe, that you're all following advice, staying indoors as much as possible. We certainly are doing that. You know, my um, kids, they're home from school today. Obviously, my eldest son, unfortunately, the company that he works for, they're what you would call an essential service provider. So he's gone to work today. I have to say, I would have preferred him, you know, not to be working for that company and be working for someone who he could be then working from home or something. But you know, that's just how it is, isn't it? And you've got to just trust the advice that hopefully he's young, he's healthy, 
you know, and hopefully it would be, you know, okay. I mean, I get that obviously it's not really about him as such. It's about if he was spreading it to people who are not young and healthy. Ah, oh, I mean, yeah. It is very scary. Very scary. And, you know, I mean, obviously I've not known anything like this in my lifetime. I'm sure none of you have ever known anything like it in your lifetimes. I'm just going to check that I am in frame. Because sometimes I've done videos like this, particularly where, you know, it's not something that's my comfort zone. And then I get lots of comments telling me I wasn't in frame. So, and obviously I've got my new, my new filming set up with my phone, which also I'm not that familiar with. Just whilst we're on that subject, I just want to explain. There's going to be a mishmash of videos coming up over the next few weeks because I had filmed some videos prior to getting my beautiful mat that I'm just loving so much, Laura. Thank you so much again. Um, and obviously prior to getting my phone and my tripod -y thing that clips onto the desk, you know. Uh, so I had already filmed those videos. So for the next few weeks, I mean, I don't know how long, there are tons of videos, but you know, my videos are going to be a mix of some here on my new filming setup and some on my old filming setup. So I just want to explain that because I just want people to know, just in case they think, well, that's strange. She's reverted back to her old scruffy uh, worktop saver. It's not that I've reverted back. Trust me. <laughs> it's not that I've reverted back. But I had filmed some films, you know, some videos prior to this because I always like to have several uploaded. I mean, normally I would say just in case like I'm not well or, you know, anything like that happens, then I've always got some videos that I can upload. Obviously, at the moment, that's taken to a whole new level and, um, you know, hopefully I will be very pleased that I've got some videos in the bank, so to speak, to upload because there may be times when I can't upload, but, you know, I will be... Well, it will go one way or another, I guess, won't it? I will either be on here all the time because actually after the homeschooling has finished, I will be bored stiff and the kids will be then just, you know, like sick of the sight of me and on their tablets and things and phones and... And I'll just be here doing more videos, so I'll be on here all the time. Or it will go the other way where there won't be much time. I think actually it might go might go the first way, to be honest. Who knows? Who knows? We're on day one. This is day one when I'm filming this of the kids being home from school. Uh, so, yeah, at this point, obviously, I don't know how it's going to be. Uh, I have to say, I'm full of enthusiasm today. Um, my husband's obviously working from home as well. So we've agreed that we'll do it like in shifts. So he's going to, you know, watch over the children. I have to say he probably will be just leaving them on their, on their devices. Um, but yeah, he will be at least roughly in the vicinity with them. Whilst I'm, you know, working and by that, I mean playing you know, with you guys and having fun. Um, and then obviously I will take over come 12 o'clock and I will have them then for the afternoon. So today being the first day, I'm full of excitement and um, embracing this opportunity to learn new things myself. Um, you know, there's loads of gaps in my knowledge, I have to say. So yeah, I've got, I've made lots of notes of things that we can do learning you know new things and stuff like that um so for today certainly i have got like lesson plans um yeah i've set lots of timers on alexa so that we have structure to our day so i thought it would be fun hopefully i mean this probably sounds like i'm just the most awful <laughs> boring parent you know but I'm, I'm hoping this is going to be fun. So we've got like alarms on Alexa to go when it's going to be like, what would have, 
what would effectively be lunchtime. So that would be 12 o'clock, obviously, when my shift takes over. And I thought at that point, you know, perhaps we'll go and have a bounce on the trampoline or, you know, if it's not nice weather one day, perhaps we'll just come inside and do some exercise inside. You know, like effectively replacing the running around that the children would ordinarily be doing. Um, then obviously, you know, I'll make lunch and they can eat lunch. And then we're gonna have lessons. So today's lessons, my daughter is learning about houses at the moment. I mean, she's six. So, you know, it's not a problem for me to keep up with her schoolwork, I have to say. You know, that's within my, my realms. Um, so she's learning about houses. So again, obviously I've Googled a bit over the weekend some ideas for, you know, when you're doing things at home with the kids. So I thought what a really fun thing would be, and again, I've put the Alexa alarms on so that we break these down into you know, timings. I've got quite a few here, so I might just quickly do a bit of sewing. Um, so I've broken these things down so that we can do, you know, like half an hour chunks, basically, because I don't know, you know, obviously I don't know how long they spend on any particular thing when they're at school. But I'm thinking half an hour sounds pretty good for a six-year-old. So obviously we're going to look at types of houses, talk about, you know, the different types of houses that people live in maybe I mean obviously most of this will be based on we will be googling things together um showing her different houses from around the world and you know different countries and things like that um and then when the bell goes for the next half an hour chunk I thought we could do some tongue twisters um I love playing with words like I mean not in some sort of really intellectual way you understand but you know I love words and I love kind of making little rhymes and things like that I'm always doing things like that with the children so uh, sometimes they work and they're very funny sometimes they're just fall flat and everyone's like oh scraping the barrel mum you know um but I thought how fun so we're going to look at tongue twisters I don't know whether she really would have heard of tongue twisters to be honest so you know other than what we do at home but you know like that peter piper picked a pickled pepper or you know whatever that is so um i in my notes i've just kind of jotted this down so so don't forget what you know what i've got in mind so i just jotted one down that to give her an idea of how to do it i think i did um Haunted houses have horrid horses. Uh, I think. Have horrid horses? I, th I think that was what I wrote. Um, not that I think horses are horrid. Please don't. <laughs> don't. Um, you know, don't write anything in the comments. This is purely for fun. I'm not suggesting horses are horrid or anything else. But just to give her an idea of how to do it. So that was my attempt at a tongue twister and hopefully she will find that really a fun activity to do um so that's that then my buzzer will go off and it will be break time for half an hour so again you know luckily the sun's shining so perhaps we will go outside into the garden again i'll you know make her go on the trampoline or something I obviously won't go on the trampoline. I will probably just sit and have a cup of tea. Um, you know, just, yeah, just have a bit of a chill out for half an hour. Um, and then we will come back in and they're doing like counting in fives at the moment. So we'll do some counting in fives. I might incorporate using some of my buttons and things to show her the counting in fives, you know, maybe things like that. Um, and then we've got a game called headbands uh, where you put on like the headband. We haven't played this for a really long time. Um, so she won't even remember the last time we played this. But we're going to put on the headbands and, you know, what you do is it's a bit like that game with the post-its where it's like, who am I? But this time it's what am I? 
so you then clip your card in it's got a picture on it. it you know it could be anything it could be like a carton of milk it could be like a chair you know and then you just have to ask questions there's an egg timer so you turn that over and um your time begins and you can ask questions you know am i you know am i a, a living thing or am I, you know, am I an appliance? Or would you find me in the kitchen? Things like that. Um, so I thought that would be a nice way to sort of finish our, our school day off. Because by that time it will obviously then be, I think that takes us up to 3.30 if I recall. So yeah, so that's my structure for today. As I say, it's day one. I'm all full of enthusiasm. I don't know how this is going to go. Maybe come like day four or something, my enthusiasm will be waning and I'll be running out of ideas and yeah, not really, not really finding it quite so fun. I'm not sure. But on the whole, you know, we're embracing it and I think it will be nice. It will be nice to spend time with the children and um, yeah, like, yeah, hopefully it will be a nice time for us. So we'll see. Um, what was I about to say on that note? Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, as I say, that's my six-year-old. So, of course, that's not going to be too, too difficult, hopefully, to uh, keep up with the types of things she's learning. My 13-year-old, much more difficult. So, again, what he's doing is during, like, the time in the morning whilst I'm here working... He is doing his stuff that's been posted on, like, the school portal. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, obviously, they're quite independent by that age, aren't they? And, you know, he's like, yeah, yeah, mum, you know, I've, I've read it. I know what I'm doing. Obviously, that's great, but I don't really know what he's doing. And they don't have those lessons where they're doing, like, a topic as such, you know. So it's a little bit more uh, tricky, I guess. So I'm not obviously really going to be, you know, putting so much into teaching him, which is kind of crazy because he's probably the age where he needs more, more in the way of teaching. But having said that, I did say to him what I will do is every afternoon when it comes to, you know, the sort of time that I'm spending obviously with his sister, what I will do, we're just going to be sat in the kitchen doing the lessons he's going to be sat with us he's certainly not going to be up in his room on his phone you know so he's going to be sat with us and I just said what I'm going to do is set you a little task each day that for that time I'm doing stuff with her he can be doing you know what I've set for him so for instance I might um give him a theme for like the starting point of a play or something like that and he will have to then, you know, write a play. Um, like in script form or something like that. Or the other thing that we, you know, have sometimes kind of talked about in our household is things like, you know, and I'm sure that I'm not alone when I say, oh, we've talked about this in our household, you know. Um, but the kids are very interested in things like, you know, how you buy a house, what's the process of buying a house, things like that, you know, because they obviously hear a lot of talk on the news and all that type of stuff. So we've talked before about, you know, how mortgages are calculated and all that kind of thing. So another thing that I think, you know, we might do is have like a bit of a recap, like session just for like 20 minutes on, you know, say like, Oh, I don't know, um, different types of mortgages or, you know, um, sort of life, life skills or life lessons type thing. Um, you know, because perhaps I will be able to help him on that where I'm not probably going to be able to help him quite so much on the academic type stuff. And then what I'll do is, you know, set him a task, then maybe like the following day, you know, the following afternoon. So I'll, I'll just have a quick chat with him sort of after the school day finishes and then the next day his task might be you know write me a you know brief outline of you know the different types of mortgages or 
you know, how you apply or something like that. Or, yeah, I don't know. We'll kind of have to wait and see. But those are the types of things I'm thinking for him because hopefully that would be more interesting for him. Definitely be more accessible for me. So we will see how that goes. I'll keep you posted. Again, it probably won't take very long for me to run out of those types of things for him to do. I mean, it might be that some days I'll just say to him, you know, sit down and read, you know, for like an hour and a half or whatever. Because to be honest, the only time he picks up a bit, I mean, actually the boys are pretty good and they do read, but the only times they read are when we are on holiday. So again, they both did some reading, obviously, in the treehouse. But that was the first time they'd read a book since last year on our road trip. Which, you know, that's a shame, isn't it? Because reading's such a lovely thing to do. And they, you know, every time that we're on holiday, they say, oh, it's just, you know, weird how you forget how nice reading is. And, um, you know, they do really enjoy it when they're on holiday doing it. But of course, what happens is as soon as you get home, you're distracted by, you know, your phone pinging and the TV and... You know, all those other things. So, yeah, to be honest, I might just set him, you know, read your book for half an hour or whatever. Certainly at least probably one day a week. Uh, not half an hour, sorry, an hour and a half. Um, yeah, and I think that's, you know, just as good, to be honest. So we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. But certainly, yeah, I'm not complaining because, of course, wow, how lucky we are you know, that we are fortunate enough to be able to work from home. You know, there are people out there really with, obviously, there are people, you know, sick and really suffering. But equally, there's also people, you know, struggling with work situations that are not so easy, being laid off from work and things, which again is just horrendous and, you know, awful and worrying and yeah so I'm not in any way complaining I you know I feel very fortunate and very lucky that we are in a situation that we are able to you know continue working have the children at home with us being safe and yeah so again obviously ugh, just sending out wishes really to everybody and just keep yourself safe honestly just keep yourself safe and also to anybody who kind of you know is in the nursing profession or anything like that I mean wow what an incredible job those amazing people are doing so I'm sure they're not watching this video or anything because I'm sure that they are far too busy you know, at work, but just, um, yeah, thinking of those people really, you know, definitely not feeling sorry for ourselves or anything because, my gosh, how difficult life must be for a lot of people. So, yeah. Anyway, moving on from that, let's, let's not dwell too much. Okay. So, I mean, these yo-yos, they're just really fun, aren't they? They're just, to me, they just sum up sort of spring and summer for some reason. It's probably just the fabrics that I am using. Um, but, I mean, seriously, that just it looks like summer to me. That little, um, that little yo-yo, it just shouts, shouts of summer. Oh. So over the weekend, yeah, we didn't go out or anything. And um, it was Mother's Day here, which I know is different times. I don't know whether it's different times everywhere or, you know, I don't know. Definitely, I know that it's a different time of year. Sorry, I'm just going to, um, you know, poke that needle in there. I know it's definitely a different time of year in, in the States to what it is here. I don't know whether it's a different time everywhere. I don't know. Um... But it was Mother's Day yesterday, so 
I obviously didn't see my mum or anything, so I sent her through a Kindle book. Um, I'd never done that before. I had tried a couple of years ago, and at that point, they didn't have that facility available here in the UK, although I think it was available in the States. Anyway, they have now made that available here, which was very handy, so it's worth people knowing that for, you know, if you have birthdays and things coming up for people that you can't get to see, and they have a Kindle, you can actually send them an actual Kindle book, which is a bit more thoughtful than obviously sending just like an Amazon voucher or something, I, I think. So I sent her a Kindle book. I know that I've mentioned this book, I'm sure I've mentioned this book before. It's called Why Love Matters. And I mean, it looks like it's aimed at new parents. And I guess to, you know, a certain extent it is. Um, I read it whilst I was doing my counselling uh, you know, training. But it was such a valuable book that, to be honest, I just think most people would probably really find it very useful. It explains so much about why we're the way we are. And um, it's, it's helpful, obviously, if you are a parent or even a grandparent or anything, you know, to help you, you know, relate and understand, I guess, like, you know, the importance of those lessons that we learn as a child, you know, how much they can just affect you, you know, for the rest of your life. Um, I mean, it sounds just a terrible book, but <laughs> it's it's a really good book and really very useful. I, I found it very useful. So, yeah, I sent her that. Um, there is a small part at the beginning of the book that's quite sciencey, like explaining how the brain, you know, works and things. So I am like the least sciencey person ever, you know. <laughs> so I did say to my mum, don't be put off because honestly that bit only lasts for a tiny, you know, a tiny few pages. Um, and it doesn't get too bad, you know, but just you don't really need to kind of focus on that too much because that's a small part of the book and it's, you know, it's over quite quickly. So hopefully she will enjoy reading that book and um, yeah, uh, hopefully hopefully she will. Because it's always a bit tricky if, if you're buying books for people, isn't it? Unless you, well, I was going to say unless you know them very well. Of course I do know my mum very well. But, you know, still I think what books one person likes you know, another person might not necessarily like. So that one I thought was quite a good one because it's not like a novel, you know, where one person might not be too keen on the same style of writing as another person, for instance. Um, you know, it's a general sort of, I don't know what you'd describe it, but I guess like a an educational book really but in a very accessible it's written in a very accessible way so um yeah hopefully she will enjoy it and again she is obviously indoors so you know i didn't go and see her and i think she lives about 10 miles away so uh, my husband did get her some flowers and we left them on her doorstep we just literally you know drove there, left them on the doorstep, phoned her and said they're on the doorstep. Um, but we didn't venture out the car other than to go out to the car. Because, um, you know, we're allowed to do that at the moment over here. I don't know whether that will stay the case or whether things will escalate further, but at the moment that was permitted. So, So we did that. But aside from that, we spent the whole weekend in the garden. And, um, oh, our garden's beginning to look so tidy already. My gosh, I mean, if we're in for ages, I can't imagine how tidy our garden's going to look. So, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure we're not alone. I'm sure a lot of people are making the most of this and tidying their garden up and their houses and things. So, we started on the garden because the weather was lovely at the weekend. Um, you know, because the weather obviously is very changeable over here. And quite often raining and not really 
suitable for going out in the garden. We thought we would make the most of it. But yeah, I mean, going forward on any rubbish days where we can't get in the garden, we're going to focus on clearing the house a little bit. I mean, I've got to be truthful and say, you know, since obviously, <clears throat> since I've been working from home and doing my junk journals and things, I have obviously been neglecting my my housework quite a lot. So, yeah, you know, kind of, I mean, it's one thing to just chuck the hoover around and make everywhere look okay, isn't it? But, yeah, I'm not doing more thorough jobs and so we have lots of things needing doing. You know, like, kind of where you get, like... Oh, I don't like to say because everyone's going to just picture what a tip her house must be. But you know, like, like say clearing the skirting, uh, cleaning the skirting boards, giving them a wipe down, things like that. Or you know, like the ledges on like a door, those types of things. You know, they are very much neglected. So um, yeah, going to kind of get get cracking with all those types of things. So hopefully, our house and garden as I'm sure the case with lots of people, you know, will have never looked cleaner and nicer. So, I mean, there is the added thing of obviously everybody's here making a mess. My daughter's terrible and very, very, very messy. So she will have to rein it in a little bit. But, um, yeah, so that's the plan. My 13-year-old, he loves cleaning. I know that sounds a really strange thing to say, but he does literally love cleaning. And um, so he will be, you know, in his element, to be honest, because every time that he's bored, I'm just going to give him, like, another job. You know, like those <laughs> wiping down the skirting boards or, um, you know, like the feather duster thing, you know, like in the corners where the spider webs get to um please don't picture my house as like mrs havisham in uh, great expectations it's not it's not quite at that level <laughs> no it's not at that level at all but but you know there are obviously corners that very rarely get a, a wipe with that i mean to be honest we don't really use that anymore we just use that handheld hoover thing you know the handheld part from the hoover and just get that up in where the cobwebs are but yeah so he can do things like that those things that you know don't very often get done I even said I might uh, buy some oven cleaner and he could do the oven which is another job that very very rarely gets done in our house so I'm gonna have a sparkling oven I'm gonna have no cobwebs oh it's going to be lovely and obviously I will pay him for each job that he does so Wow, I mean, I'll be broke by the end of this, you know, he'll be rolling in it, so. <laughs> but, I mean, hopefully that's going to be really great because it will keep him busy. He'll get, um, you know, a little bit of money and, um, yeah, hopefully we'll have a lovely gleaming house by the end of this. So, you know, again, things could be much worse, so, you know. Anyway, so that's some more things that I've got planned. We're going to try and keep to like a routine of getting up in the morning at a set time and all that type of stuff. I don't want the kids to just think this is now like the holidays where they, you know, they just lay in. I mean, not that my daughter does, unfortunately, but my son, I mean, he would. So, yeah, we're not going to have this whole just get up at lunchtime business going on, I think. It's important, you know, to try and stay as per normal as much as possible. I mean, obviously, like when it's the Easter holidays, we will stop, you know, our homeschooling and have the Easter holidays, which I think are like in two weeks time. So we'll, um, yeah, have like a little, little breather from schoolwork then. And, and from the household chores, unless he wants to continue by which case, of course, he can. Of course he can. I'm sure there'll still be plenty to do. Okay. 
Oh, and also, like, we've got some hedges and things that really need trimming. So he could, uh, you know, possibly do that type of stuff. So there's going to be a lot of things to do. And actually, it was really lucky because we just bought some wallpaper to redo our hall. Because hallways get really... Um, you know, they have a lot of traffic, don't they? So they get really tatty. And I think we decorated our hall about five years ago, but it was looking quite tatty again. So luckily we had happened to have bought the wallpaper about three or four weeks ago. So that's underway now, um, decorating the hall, which is always a hideous job, isn't it? And I've ordered some paint because I've got a couple of little light units in the hall one is a uh, a little cupboard you know that we keep our towels in so I've ordered some of that Annie Sloan paint and I shall be painting painting that so I hope that the shop where I ordered it from is open and uh, able to do deliveries so we'll see if not I will order some other chalk paint not the Annie Sloan some other one from Amazon and uh, do it that way but yeah so I mean there's lots of things to keep us busy I might even do a video of the uh, painting of the of the cabinet I quite like painting furniture I have to say I mean again you can probably imagine I'm just as messy and rubbish with that I just plow straight in don't cover my hands or anything so again within 30 seconds of the tin opening I'm invariably covered in the paint but I love seeing the transformation on the furniture so I might do that if anyone hasn't ever used that chalk paint before who's vaguely interested in painting furniture it's just brilliant stuff because you don't have to prepare the surfaces at all <laughs> you just um, yeah just clean them down and then just paint them obviously you do need to seal them with like a wax or a varnish or something but providing that you do they're brilliant I mean I painted my dresser in the kitchen um, a few years ago now I don't know two years ago maybe but I had painted it previously you know when we first bought it we just got it quite cheaply for you know about 50 pounds or something from Amazon a few years ago and it was pine and I'd painted it originally and it looked you know transformed kind of from the pine dresser to like an ivory color and then a couple of years ago I just gave it another facelift and painted it gray using the Annie Sloan this time whereas previously I had you know done the laborious task of sanding it down and painting it just with normal paint so the Annie Sloan was uh, absolutely brilliant right so I might leave that one without without a button I think yeah so uh, if you haven't ever used that paint and you do like painting furniture or you've got some furniture that needs painting chalk paint is brilliant so actually I've also got a, a unit in my bedroom which I had painted a couple of the units in my bedroom and then it was the winter so you know I just didn't bother doing the rest I just left like the other one got one other unit and I just just left it in its original sort of ivory color so who knows maybe I will even get that outside and uh, paint that one to match the other two Right, let's check what time I'm up to. What time is that? Oh, I'm still struggling to see because the the lens is very small, obviously, on a phone. I think it's a 45. Right, let's take this colour. Okay. Yeah, there's always things to do, aren't there? So... And actually, talking of things to do, um, I mean, I go to yoga a lot. We've got this lovely 
like yoga studio here, like a dedicated yoga studio here. Oh, and it's just lovely. It's a lovely atmosphere and environment there. Um, and very sadly, one of the lovely yoga teachers left a few weeks ago. Um, it just again, you know, lifestyle kind of, she was obviously not really, I think, you know, it wasn't financially kind of working for her because she was obviously doing a bit of that and a bit of other things. She, she was having to commute quite away from her home. She was having to do long days on her shifts when she was working and things like that. So it just didn't really work with, you know, how she obviously wanted her life to be going, which, you know, I was so devastated when she left because she always did a Friday night class and it was such a lovely class and she's a lovely person. Um, and her classes are just brilliant. Anyway, when she left, she has um, started a YouTube channel. So happily, I have um, done a couple of classes on her channel and they are lovely. Um, she's actually from Switzerland, so she has a lovely accent as well. And um, I just noticed, I think yesterday, that she had put up a family family yoga class on her channel so again I might do that with the children on one of our lunchtime exercise sessions if the weather's not nice or whatever we might do one of the family yoga classes one of her family yoga classes so um, I will try and remember to link her channel below because she's obviously just started out and you know, if yoga is your thing, she's lovely and her classes obviously are, you know, really, really nice. And obviously if you are at home with the children and just looking for other things to do, you might like to check out her family yoga class. As I say, I haven't done it yet, so, you know, I don't know what it's like or anything else. But Anya, definitely, I mean, she's a lovely person and a really great teacher. So I'm sure that her class, you know, her family class will be really really nice to do so I will try and remember to link her below as well um, so yeah you know it's really nice to see that hopefully this is going to be a lovely opportunity for for you know other people I guess who I don't know how to describe it but you know it will be obviously you know along with the very sad news of so many businesses folding there will maybe be other things flourishing, which will be, you know, nice for those those businesses, won't it? So, and we obviously are very blessed and fortunate to have our lovely crafting community here. So, as I say, I mean, who knows? I might just be uploading endless videos and <laughs> you'll all be like sick of the sight of um, me, you know, and be like, oh, another video she's putting up another video oh my gosh <laughs> but it depends it depends how um <laughs> how the time goes anyway yeah okay aren't those yo-yos just such cute little things i just really do think they're just such a sweet little thing to add to a journal and I don't know why, but for some reason, I always do the yo-yos in these bright, fun fabrics. Um, yeah, and don't ask me why, I have no idea. But always, because I think for some reason, they just really lend themselves to this fun feel. You know, they just, they're such a cute little flower. And they just seem to lend themselves so well to, you know, like if you do kids book journals or anything like that. In fact, I'm not even sure that I've ever done any sort of vintagey style yo-yo flowers. I'm not sure. Who knows? Maybe that's another, another video coming up. In fact, maybe, maybe later today. Well, later this morning. It will depend how my time goes, obviously, because I've got a few other things on the go as well. I'm also working on a little really fun, well, hopefully again will be really fun, um, 
really fun thing that we can all share in together in these you know these times and uh yeah hopefully it's going to be just something really really different and really just just really super fun really so I'm working on that I've kind of got the idea I've filmed the first video but I just want to film like a few back to back because again just in case anybody gets sick or anything here I don't want to then have half filmed a series um I'm not well I don't know whether it will be a series but you know I don't want to be halfway through the project and then not be able to finish it so before uploading any I just want to be ahead of the game if that makes sense you know because I always just think you don't really know do you I mean it only takes an emergency or something to come up and then what do you do then if you've uploaded half of them you're kind of committed then so yeah but hopefully it's going to be something very fun and something we can all join in and yeah just take us away from what's going on outside so right let's just knock that one off Yeah, I think we'll do another fabric one next week, actually, because um, I think it's quite fun. Oh, I'm just looking at my clock here again. And oh, I know you probably all just think, oh, what is wrong with this woman? Get some glasses. I did actually end up buying some glasses, you know, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Anyway, it was now, actually. I'm obviously of that age now that uh, my eyes are deteriorating. So um, I have got some glasses. I'm kind of resisting wearing them at the moment like for things like this but to be honest I might have to give in and start wearing them um but yeah so now I've got my new camera set up obviously it's a phone screen which you know looks pretty small compared to obviously my iPad screen that I'd used previously and what happens is where it's in that cradle thing you know clipped onto the desk obviously it's up in the sky up in the air it's not in the sky obviously but you know it's just a couple of feet above my hands um when I look down on it now the light's kind of just shining onto the screen from my like Velux window that's here because I'm in the loft and I can't then really see the time so that's why just in case you're wondering why can she never tell what time it is can't tell because the lights kind of hit him where the time actually is displayed on the screen so when I say oh I think that says like 45 minutes or whatever it's because I genuinely can't really see I can see like maybe a four and then I can see something else but because the light hitting it I can't tell whether that something else is a three or a five so yeah just explaining there in case kind of people are sat thinking what is wrong with this woman? Why can she never actually see what's going on on the screen? Okay. Oops. Oh, this one's like titchy. Look at it. Oh, there we go. It really makes a difference once you start spreading it out, to be honest. But that one's quite cute. So I might just leave this one with no button. I think the tiny ones are quite sweet without buttons, to be honest. They look, they look cute. Okay, so I'm just going to knock that one off. Like that. Okay, so let me just see if I can see a bit better now. I think it's like 55 minutes. So probably that's going to be it for today's mass making. Let me move these buttons out of the way. Now, do I have anything I can use as a page to demonstrate? Not really, but I'm just going to roughly show you how these would look. I mean, obviously this, this is not a journal page, but just to give you a bit of an idea of how they would look. Aren't they so cute? So, yeah, how many did we make? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, twelve. Not too bad, because I do find fabric stitching and all that very fiddly. 
So I hope you like them. I hope that you managed to get some made um, yourself. And yeah, I um, as I say, I've got some fun stuff planned to keep us all busy and, you know, minds off what's going on. And uh, yeah, I hope everybody's safe and well. Keep yourself safe and well. Stay in, do some nice things, do some crafting. And I will see you guys very soon. Thanks then. See you guys soon. Bye.